Hi everybody, my name's Damon. A lot of people uh, call me by my nickname and that's DAG, D-A-G. I've been asked by um, a lot of my friends uh, through YouTube and my website uh, to make um, more of the do-it-yourself videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a three-part series and uh, it's on how um, hopefully that I'm going to build a carbon fiber propeller. So basically um, part one is going to be the making of the molds and doing some test propellers. Part two is going to be actually making the propellers and then part three will be testing the propellers. Uh, the biggest reason I'm doing this is um, when I go to uh, make the propellers for my C-130 project, uh, I started with wooden props and the wooden props have to be machined perfectly or the prop tip does not track right when the propeller spins. And that's been a huge problem that I've had uh, getting my propellers to work. I mean, <clears throat> technically they've never blown apart. I've spun them all the way up to 6,000 RPM and the uh, uh, hub and the bolts have never failed. But the prop tip, the way it tracks has always been off and it looks bad. And I, I, you know, I really want this to look right. So what I'm going to talk about, uh, and I have a lot of pictures that's going to illustrate this, but I want to talk about what it takes to build one of these propellers. Um, when I use resins, and my epoxies are, uh, the resin and the hardener is the West system. The reason I like the West system the most is because um, while these are two different size containers, there's a certain ratio you have to have when you mix your epoxies. One pump of the resin and one pump of the hardener ensures that the correct mixture uh, that will cure right. <clears throat> I use for my mold release the PVA-10. And um, if you use that right in conjunction with wax, it will without a doubt work perfect when you go to release your parts. I use just a regular Harbor Freight, you know, $20 sprayer to put on the PV-10. And um, a lot of the success comes down to just being patient, okay? If you're patient, uh, things will work. I also use phenolic micro balloons, and you can use any color, any kind, it doesn't matter. Uh, here's an example of uh, some molds that I tried to make, and I have close-ups of these I'll show further in the video. Uh, but this was a disaster, complete failure. This was uh, close, but I had some bubbles around it because my uh, micro balloons were too thick. So it didn't get into the piece that I was creating. Also, I have lots of pictures of this. This was just kind of a conceptual idea that I did. Uh, but the problem is is that the other half of it, you wouldn't be able to lay the cloth in it properly. This one worked really good, and I may actually make some propellers from it. I was able to make these two test propellers, which I'll show you pictures later of, but these were just solid fiberglass just to prove that the molds work. I started all this process out by taking a master air screw prop and cutting it in half. I then get it shaped the way I want for the C-130 propeller and then I would prime it. I would put um, at least one coat of the color I want and then I'd put five coats of clear uh, enamel, glossy. Um, the important thing is to wax everything many times. And then when you go to put the PVA on, you have to mist it really, really fine that very first coat so that the wax doesn't cause beading. A lot of people will have beading happen to them. I've never had it happen. You put on your first coat really, really thin, a mist. Then you put five coats on of after that. And when you go to release your parts, they will come apart. So I make my molds out of regular fiberglass, um, five ounce cloth. I'm going to use this 5.7 ounce carbon fiber to make my propellers. And uh, with that said, I think we're going to look at a bunch of the still images that I've got, gotten me all the way to this point so far. So I hope you enjoy the video. Um, like I said before, I've probably had 10 million emails asking me to do this. Um, you have to be patient, okay? I have probably used somewhere around five to 6,000 gallons of this. I've probably had I don't know, two to three thousand gallons of this. It takes patience. Um, also, you just got to decide you're never going to get up, give up until you get it done right. So, um, with that said, I think we're going to go through um, some of the pictures I've taken, some of the close-ups. 
Um, there's not going to be a lot of video footage on this, um, as there's really just not that much to videotape. Um, like I said, in part one is making the molds, part two is going to be um, actually making the blades, which I will have some video to that, and then part three will be mostly video because we're going to be testing the propellers and trying to blow them up and destroy them. So uh, thank you very much, and um, I really hope you find this educational, um, and it helps people understand that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Um, I've gotten as far as I have in this by doing it wrong at least 10 or 20 times. Okay, I, I, I've never had anything work the first time, ever. Okay, thanks a lot. So this is what I want to replicate with carbon fiber props that come out of a mold. That way every one of the tips will be the same thickness and they will track right. I started with the master air screw as just a way to experiment, but it's really turned out great. I built a template out of an uh, AutoCAD program of mine and plotted it so that I had a way to really know where the prop tip would lie within relationship to my hub. Here you can see that I've marked the propeller to line up with what its actual diameter is supposed to be with its relationship to the center hub. My first rough cut was just on my bandsaw to make sure that I had the uh, right length and uh, the relationship of the prop tip to the hub and where the holes will be that screw to the hub. This picture shows that I've already started shaping the tip to look more like a C-130 blade. Uh, you know, to take a master air screw prop and make it look like a C-130, it needs to be a big paddle looking propeller, so most of the tip had to be removed. Here I've started sanding it down so I can uh, prep it for primer because I don't want to have any wood grain. I want this to look like in real life it's some kind of metal or composite prop. Here I've bathed it in uh, primer. I love bathing my parts in primer because I like to just wet sand with 600 grain until it looks as smooth as glass. I then put a coat of white primer on it as my color and I very lightly wet sand this. If I see the gray I put another coat on but this is to prepare it for at least five coats of clear enamel. And uh, that enamel is there so I have something to wax. I want to be able to get it as glossy as I can so that it will actually uh, you know, part well. Here I started to build what's going to hold the clay. I'm going to use the clay as one half of the mold. So I just use regular clay I bought at Walmart. You're going to want your room to be about 75 to 80 degrees so the clay is good and soft and pliable because you really want the clay to be able to work in around the pieces of the uh, propeller. You can't see it here but there's a piece of plexiglass on the bottom of this. So basically I've just built a way that I'm going to push all of my pot, I'm sorry, push all of my clay in there so that when I have something to epoxy against, it, it you know, creates one half of my mold. So here I have uh, the clay in there, and I'm going to press one of my other blades that I've made, just a uh, mock-up of a blade, to create an impression. Once I've done that impression, I've got a way to start building the clay up around the leading and trailing edge. This particular mold didn't turn out very good. The actual inside where the blade was turned out okay, but the mold itself just it just didn't work out very well because it was my first one. I could have pulled pretty easy some uh, test blades from this, but you know I'm learning here. And uh, here you can see I've put on at least five coats of the PVA. The first mist coat has to be very thin so it won't bead. And um, now I'm going to be ready to put on some resin. And here I have um, three, three, a very thin coat and then two thicker coats. Each one I let cure until it becomes tacky. And then I put glass cloth, about five layers of five ounce cloth on top of it. Once it's all cured, I flip it over and pull all the clay and everything off it. And I end up with one half of my mold here. This is really neat because I, I can wax this again. And I can put on my PVA. Remember, a mist coat and then four or five thicker coats and then I build up the resin and glass and this is what it will look like. Uh, let this sit all night. You, you want it to absolutely cure because believe it or not the more cure it is the easier it pops apart because it's not sticky. Here I popped them apart. This is not perfect by any means but this was good enough to pull one good test propeller so I know I could do this now. So here's where I'm starting to do what ended up being my best mold. I really took my time. I got a test blade in there, made an impression, then I pulled that out and put in my highly waxed and really glossed and polished blade. Make sure you build the uh, wax up around the, I mean the uh, clay up around the leading and trailing edge and the tips. Then I waxed it. Then I put my PVA on. You can see the prop actually turned a little green from the PVA. And this is ready now to put on the resin. 
remember, a really thin coat of resin, uh, make sure you build a trough around it so the resin doesn't run off. Really thin coat of resin, let it cure for four or five hours until it becomes good and tacky, and then put on some thicker coats. It's got to be thin or you'll have bubbles. This is what it looked like when uh, it was curing. Uh, about an hour after this, when it became good and tacky, I put on uh, five to ten coats of fiberglass cloth. Here, I've popped the clay off it. I've drilled four holes, which are going to become like alignment plugs. Put on a really thin coat of uh, micro blooms and resin around the perimeter of the prop and let that cure. And then I put on some thicker coats. And uh, actually here I ran some masking tape around the outside perimeter just to hold it all on there so it won't run off. Okay, so I built basically a trough out of masking tape here. Now if you do this right, and you put on five or six, coat, I mean five or six layers of five ounce cloth, let it cure overnight, you can pop them apart, and there I have my alignment holes, I mean my alignment um, like plugs, I have a good mold, I've already pulled one test propeller, which came out perfect. So I really think, you know, I'm good to go. Now, the most important thing after you pop this apart is to clean up the blade. I mean, clean up the holes where the blade were because you'll have a little bit of excess uh, resin. But wax and wax, wax, wax. You, you just want to wax this so that it's almost like a mirror shine. And that way, when you put the PVE on the PV, you'll get hundreds of pulls from this. It won't hurt the mold. Here they are polished up and really buffed up. And, uh, you know, it was really exciting because I pulled a test propeller from it and the blade was flawless. Now, it wasn't carbon fiber, but uh, the bottom blade in this picture was the last one I pulled from the newest mold and it came out perfect. It was very exciting. Now, these next pictures are disasters. Here is where I was experimenting the very first time. I didn't have enough PVA on. Um, my micro balloons was too thick. I had bubbles. It just was a mess. Um, but this is how you learn. Uh, this was a disaster. And um, I'm not sure if there's anything else to say about it. This one, I didn't have the blade laying flat in the mold. And I never thought about what the other half of the mold would look like. So when I made the other half of the mold, it, it, while it was a really nice mold, there's just no way I was going to be able to lay carbon fiber in the other half of this and then sandwich the two together. So this one was a failure also. Uh, this one just had bubbles everywhere. Again, micro balloons um, was too thick. I didn't put in multiple layers of it. And, um, you know, bubbles are bad. Uh, same thing with this. You can see all the uh, unevenness, the clay. When I went to uh, lay the resin into the clay, the clay had bumps and it just it screwed it all up. The clay's got to be flat, uh, almost like glass. Here you can see the air bubbles around the tips. The micro balloons were just too thick. And, um, you know, I know there's people out there that does it with glazing and all that stuff. I'm not saying the way I'm doing it's perfect. It's just what works for me. Here's one of the hardest things of the whole project. This is harder than my first marriage. Um, I just bought a $65 prop, cut it in half, which is carbon fiber. You can see that it's hollow. I needed to understand how they did this. This looks to be four or five layers of carbon fiber on each half of the mold. Then the mold was sandwiched together, and you had your hollow propeller. Now, my props are much smaller than this. This was just a 3212. Uh, I'm making basically a 16-inch diameter prop, and each blade seven inches because, you know, I got the hub in the middle. So mine's going to be much, much thinner, probably two layers on the front and half. I'll sandwich them together, and I'll see what I get. So I hope this was informative, and I hope it makes you realize that, uh, you know, if you just want to try, you can do anything. So thanks a lot, everybody. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that, and it's what you were hoping you would see. What we're going to try to do in the next episode, which is part two, is I'm going to lay the uh, carbon fiber cloth in here with the resin on one part of the mold, do it on the other part of the mold, only have two layers. I'm going to try to squeegee all the wet resin out that I can get so there's just enough to hold the carbon fiber together. I'll then put a bead of resin around each perimeter, put these together, let them cure overnight, and hopefully when I open them up, we're going to have a carbon fiber prop that I can actually test. Now the hub area is still going to have to have some solid um, mass put in there of some kind. I don't know if it's going to be hardwood. I don't know if I'm going to build it up out of carbon fiber. I haven't gotten that far in... Um, my experimentation yet. A couple of things I would like to talk about real quick. 
is my resins. The West system, um, while a lot of people will say $125 a gallon or $140 a gallon, whatever I'm paying, or the $40 for the hardener, um, whatever I'm paying, they just say that's way above their league. But when I was first using like z where I basically had two 8 ounce or two 10 ounce bottles, you, this is a half the price, if not probably 70% less money going with a West type system or any other commercially available epoxy system. z is great if you're doing a little bitty stabilizer or you'll do an ailerons, but the amount of z you take to do an airplane, um, the size I do, you know, to do a fuselage with z like this would just be insane, uh, the amount of price that you would spend on it. So um, I hope this was informative. I hope this is helping everybody kind of understand what I do. Uh, one last thing, it's quarter till 12 at midnight right now. A lot of people don't realize the only time I get to do this is very late at night, sometimes very early in the morning. Uh, I have a real job where I travel all the time, and um, I really get little time to spend on this hobby right now. This uh, project's been going on for over three years, and it should have taken me less than a year. So I hope you enjoyed this, and um, hopefully in episode two, uh, part two, I mean, we'll actually get to make some propeller blades out of carbon fiber, and they'll work. And then in part three, we'll test them, and if it works, then uh, I guess this is all worth it. So um, at the end of the day, it's all worth it because we're learning something. Thanks a lot.